up you guys, After Share Reacts here and today I'm going to be reacting to some more Stargate SG-1. This is Season 4, Episode 9. So how are we going? You good? That's great. I hope. Um, I just went to the dentist yesterday so my mouth is actually really sore still. They put like six needles in my mouth to numb this whole section right here. Um, and now my tooth feels really, really weird. I need to go again, uh, in like an hour. So hopefully I can get one recording done before I gotta go. Uh, cause there's parts that are like sticking into my tongue, which I wouldn't have been able to tell while I was numb. Anyways, that's me. How about you? Uh, let's go over the comments. Uh, I'm fine. How are you? Good, I hope. I don't see how the kitties don't love you. You're adorable. Uh, thank you. I don't know. Uh, I know, right? What's not to love? Willow and Smudge suck a judgment of character. Especially Willow. That unrelenting... Just... Shh, sh my hair She's very cute and she just... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Actually, just a second. Sorry about that. Um. Anyways, continue. Jack's line about never having been on a sub before was him still playing up that he has no knowledge of the events. Despite the Russian government knowing what's been happening, Jack is still being stubborn and denying any classified info as he would before just really not as convincing since he also wanted them to know he's being intentionally stubborn fair enough um from someone who has skydived um they would not have had daniel and tilk free dive i didn't know you'd skydive before okay uh they would have hooked up a static line that that's a cable that connects the rip cord on the parachute to the plane so that it initiates the parachute automatically. Many first time jumpers mentally freeze up on their first jump and pull the rip cord too late. Really? I don't want to do skydiving then, no thank you. I would freeze. Just an FYI, the Russian scientist was played by Miranda Sirtis, uh, who played a regular on Star Trek The Next Generation. The ship's counselor, Diana Troy. Alright. Uh, these are just my guesses. The organism in the water wanted back. When the Russians released the nerve gas, the organisms probably didn't have time to exit the humans before going through the Stargate. Maybe they are susceptible to the gas, but in Tilk's case, there was time. No. Uh, the water isn't intelligent, it's the organisms living in it. Uh, they have learned to manipulate the water for the purposes. There was a movie that came out around this time where an alien race had done that as well. Okay, what movie was that? Mayborn may have run to Russia with an offer to help the, them with their gate to evade arrest after the Shades of Grey episode. Didn't they arrest him? I don't know how he could have possibly just ran to them, sure. Um, being a traitorous spy, it's possible he found out about the Russian's gate through his contacts. Um, it's also possible he was captured by the Russians, uh, was hiding from the US authorities. Maybe, I, I don't know. I think the real reason I like this episode because of Miranda's, Miranda Sirtis' cameo. The story is fine, it's fine, but it did feel a bit rushed at the end. Absolutely. Richard Dean Anderson was apparently a fan of Sirtis and offered to stay late after his contract end of day just to spend time acting with her. It is, as far as I know, the only t exception that he made. Uh, she's talked about it and really enjoyed her time there. Apparently Anderson is known to be kind of a jerk sometimes, but he was really nice to her, um, and she has nothing but nice things to say. Well, whoever says he's a jerk, I'd, uh, maybe they're the jerk. 
Just saying. If she's got nothing but nice things to say. Mayborn was actually stated that it was the scientists themselves who chose to run through the gate to escape the nerve gas. It was certain death versus near certain death and they chose the latter. Okay. Uh, I've met Richard Dean Anderson in person. I don't know who, uh, where you got the notion that he can be a jerk. He was one of the kindest celebrities I've ever met. Miranda Sotis as well as I met her at one point in time. Richard Dean Anderson was beloved by pretty much everyone that worked with him. The actor who played Martouf only got the job because Richard Dean Anderson went to bat for him. Yeah, so I don't know who thinks that he's a jerk, but clearly they're the jerk. Just saying. Uh, the reasons they were hiding in the freezer was is because, as we saw, the water monster freezes like any other water, so it can go in there. So it can't go in there without getting stuck, and it wanted to escape. As for Mayborn, as I said, he is now the Russians. Um, he's how the Russians have all the information on Stargate. He sold the information to them. Alright, um, okay, um, and then on to the other episode. I just don't know how Mayborn is there, like, I thought he was arrested. Uh, is there a schedule for Stranger Things? Nope, I will react to it when I have the time to do that. Currently, right now, I am uploading way too many things and recording way too many things that I'm getting really stressed out and yes so I'll do it when I can. Uh, I don't want to push myself any further than I will because I have had seven mental breakdowns in the past two weeks so there we go. Um, try as I might I just can't bring myself to Miss Rothman. Fair. Rothman isn't in the military he is like Daniel an archaeologist working with the SG team, he even says to Daniel, I like ordering around the military types. The show is trying to make him less intelligent and more annoying. Daniel. Fair, but uh, he's, he's, he's super dead now. Uh, the reason Martouf got killed, probably in East, from what I've heard, there it was a DVD commentary where the producers said they got pressured by the studio to write in a new Toka representative, someone who could appeal to the male demographic in the same way that the characters of the Seven of the Nine did on Star Trek Voyager, basically meaning a sexy alien woman. Uh, the pieces weren't happy with it either. You were right in your guess, since we're not doing week breaks in YouTube for SG1. Considering I finished all the edits, uh, Full Times 06 will come out the 3rd of August, provided. <laughs> <coughs> provided you don't forget to post it, which is very likely. Uh, I'm, I'm bad at remembering stuff sometimes. Uh, there's a very cut up version of the Smallville intro still in there. Might get uh, blocked because of that, but by then you will have had plenty of time to check it. Smirk. Alright. Just FYI, uh, you were wrong in that guess. The guy who opened the door that Tilk kept bumping into was not Sila. Uh, that was just some random SGC dude. You tried though, it's your first time watching, so it's whatevs. Um, the notion that every season has a mid-season two part is coincidence, mostly. Okay, so I'm not- So I shouldn't expect a two-part of this, these two episodes? Okay, listen to me. Now, Fruits, you don't remember this, but have I previously stated it'd be a bad thing if the Stargate got destroyed on Earth. Stargate, go big boom. Okay. Um, I mean, an outgoing wormhole could potentially still be a problem. The SGC has had trouble shutting down an outgoing wormhole before. In the Black Hole episode, the Russians have had little to no experience with the Stargate, so they wouldn't know how to shut it down if this could potentially result in the destruction of our entire planet. Um, of course, this is not what happened in the episode, but that's what Carter meant by potential danger of having a world, of having an open wormhole between Earth and who knows where. 
The Russian woman showed up in this episode. Um, what I can recall, the second Star Trek main cast member in a short period of time. This actress is from Star Trek The Next Generation. Where she played Deanna Troy. I actually met her a few years ago. Uh, when a certain friend of mine, you know him, took me to a Star Trek convention for my birthday and she got really close to me and my friend and was all awe at how tall my friend was. Two meters? Nine centimeters? Yeah, that friend. Um, O'Neill said he'd never been to uh, in a submarine before because he was trying to maintain the mission where he they infiltrated a at a rush because <sighs> um, he was trying to maintain that the mission where they infiltrated at Russian sub to hunt for replicators didn't happen. Fruits, you would not be good at keeping secret missions secret, but I already knew that. Doofus. You don't know. Maybe I could be really, really, really good. No, you're right. You've mentioned several times in the past that some episodes have had an abrupt ending. Four times over seven takes that to a whole nother level. Tilk didn't go through the gate like the Russian scientists did because obviously he's Tilk. Then Carter, Daniel, and Russian worm uh, woman, <laughs> the Russian woman, get yeeted back through the gate because. The alien knew the end credits were about to come up. Also, unanswered. Why was Mayborn there? And what happens to the Stargate um, that the Russians found? Do the Russians now have their own Stargate program? As for filler episodes go, 4 times 7 was a doozy. Exactly. So, like, what happened to that Stargate? Do the, does Russia still just keep that one? We don't know. They didn't... They didn't wrap up anything. Um, bearded dude isn't a military person for it. He's a scientist. Not all people in the SG seems are soldiers. Um, Daniel, for instance, is an archaeologist with some basic weapons training. Uh, the fact the bearded dude suffers from asthma doesn't rule him out any more than Daniel with his allergies. Which, yeah, what happens? What happened with that? Did the sarcophagus episode cure his allergies? This is true. I completely forgot that he was an archaeologist in that moment, I guess, when I asked the question. I don't know. Uh, ha, I nearly spit out my chips. <laughs> <laughs> the Unas. <laughs> nope. Nope. I can get through this. Uh, you, I'm just telling you guys, uh, when, this, when uh, episode 8 of season 4 for as on YouTube. You should really check that edit out because, um, the, the, okay. The Unas kneels down and starts chanting, you, are you, are you pooping? <laughs> Would it surprise you if Chaka was played by none other than a young voice modulated Paul Wesley? Stephen Salva- no. I don't- I don't think so. I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. Okay. Uh, you can most decidedly hear the rain in the recording, but it's okay. It went away pretty fast and you can still hear the episode while- while the ra ring was going. Oh, and you can also be heard, just in case you'd like to know. Cool. I'm, 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 I'm glad that, um, that, that, I, that you could hear me. Cool. Um, well, so much for Bearded Dude. I guess he'll never really get the position on an SG-1 then. You and Chaka killed the leader. I'm the alpha now. I see that smirk. I'll see what I can do with it. Added now is You know what I did! Uh... Yeah, the episode was very much you learn the language along with Daniel kind of thing. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. The episode itself was eh, but at least it was better than 4 or 7. Um, I do also want to add that like it kind of like left it kind of open-ended in the sense that like 
did the Unas did did Chaka um, did he kill those SG people or was it um what was his name you keep calling him bearded dude eh? uh was a bearded dude someone said his name here uh Rothman it could have been Rothman the whole time like you don't we don't know how long he was taken over by uh, a ghoul so um, it's possible that he was the one that killed all of the SG team that, that was there. Anyways, um, let's get into this episode. We are especially honored today by the presence of those responsible for finding this planet for us and saving us from certain doom. How can we ever repay them? Is she blind or is that boring them with long speeches? <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> you look so young! I meant what I said. Okay, but you he are had all yellow eyes too, but to her full people. eyes. It's our pleasure. When my grandchild arrives, it will be the first and Karen to be born God. in our new homeland. We will name the child after you, Colonel. He gets everything named after him. A ship, a child. <laughs> it's getting cold. It seems to be getting colder each day since you last visited. Yes, our atmospheric monitoring equipment is indicating that. We only had a short time to assess the planet's conditions, but it appears as if you may be in for a more severe winter than we first predicted. Well, the Naquita reactor we brought you should provide enough energy to heat well, your Well, it's nice that they save these people, I guess. Help me, please! What is it? so big. It destroyed our whole village. You must all flee. What are you talking about? Caleb, catch your breath. It comes this way. What does? You must see it. Stargate. There. Whoa. What the hell? What is it? Dude, you look so weird with facial hair. When based on the ship's current speed, I estimate it'll take approximately 26 hours to reach Hedrazar's village. But it'll take out the Stargate first. Can we evacuate the Incarans in time? Tilk's prepping them right now. The concern is where to send them. I mean, even low levels of radiation can cause the Incarans to go blind. Without the density of ozone on this particular planet, they'll all die. The only other planet we know of with similar conditions is the original Incarn homeworld, and according to Incarn verbal history, there's no Stargate there. Right, the ghoul kidnapped their ancestors with ships. Even if we had a method of transportation, the Incarns of today would have no concept of where that planet is in the galaxy. I'll put SG-5, 6, and 9 out looking for another suitable planet. How did you find these guys, then? It's doubtful they'll find one in time, sir. How long can we keep the Incarns here on Earth in the meantime? Matter of days. Their condition would degrade the longer they were here. There are thousands of them outside Hitterzar's village, spread a fair distance from the gate. It took us two weeks to transplant them to P5S381 in the first place. The point is, General, we could never save them all. Okay, let's destroy this, this thing then. What's going on? We do not wish to leave, O'Neill. The Duke says you don't want to go? If we go with you to Earth, and you cannot find another world on which we could live, we will die there. You will die here Give anyway. Chance. Would there be time to take every and Karen? No. We cannot leave our people behind. Look, I understand how you feel. Generations ago, our ancestors were kidnapped from their home world and taken away in giant ships. Since then, we have all prayed for a place that we could call home. Thanks to you, we have found it. We must stay here and fight for it. With what? Have you not weapons to aid us? We're going to try to communicate with whoever's on that ship first. Clearly, they intend to destroy us. I you mean, don't they don't know, know what. Sure. Yeah. I know that if the Ankaran people are to die, then we shall all die here, together. It's a bold statement to make about a whole bunch of people. Maybe give people a choice. Transmitter's now operational, sir. Let's hope we get a bite. Think a well-placed stinger would do some damage? No, we have no way of knowing what material the ship's made of, sir. Or if it possesses shield technology. Uh, just fantasizing. Any intelligence capable of engineering something like that has to be capable of reason. The question is, will they listen? Well, the real question is, will they have ears? It appears to be a storage facility of some kind. I'm going to assume we're on board that ship. They were expecting us. Carter. Sir? Should we really be opening drawers and things? 
<laughs> what did I just say? Sorry. <laughs> you keep going. Looks like some kind of tissue sample. Of what? I'm not sure. The ship's terraforming the planet, right? What if these are the life forms it's creating the new environment for? Recreating an entire civilization. Millions of samples. So, every one of these things is, uh, what? Plant, animal, insects? Alien? Who knows? It's still just a guess. A good one. I have low tap. You have yellow eyes. You need not fear me. Like the dudes downstairs. Yeah. Listen, uh, what's going on around? I've been assembled in order to more easily facilitate communication between this ship, as you call it, and yourselves. Assembled, you say? I'm a biomechanical representation of the beings now occupying this planet. When they were first encountered, several Lucarans were scanned by the ship, and a randomized but similar appearance was selected. Wait a second, that was yesterday. The ship analyzed a new life form and created a replica in one day? I suppose that explains why you look like an Incaran. Sort of. You are not. Uh, no. We're from a, a planet called Earth. Uh, this is Major Daniel Jackson. I'm Samantha Carter. This is Teal'c. And this is Jack O'Neill. Actually, we're friends of the people your ship seems bent on wiping out. Yes, that is unfortunate. I was created to deliver a message to them. However, by the time I was completed, the Incarans in the immediate vicinity seemed to have disappeared. Yeah, see, that's called running away. What one does to avoid being slaughtered there are still quite a few Incarans living on the planet. Since you are friends of the Incarans, would you deliver the message to them? That would depend. When the transformation process was first begun, there were no sentient life forms present. Yeah, well, there are now. Yes. Unfortunately for your friends, once the process has begun, it must be completed. Are you saying someone went to the trouble of making you just to come here to tell those folks tough luck? Get out? We wish no harm to come to the Incarans. However, upon examination of their physiology, it has been determined that they will not be able to exist in the planet's transformed environment. So, stop transforming. Jack, they're just trying to get the point across in the best way possible. I know what the point is. He's a PR guy. I think we should be talking to your boss. Assumption of hierarchical command structure. Interesting. Follow me. The ship is fully automated. The beings that built it are called the Gadmir. Not exactly E.T. They placed all of their knowledge within the ship's memory. Science, mathematics, medicine, art, philosophy. 10,000 years of civilization. This is their legacy. They were a very advanced race compared to the Incarans. However, they were also peaceful and fell victim to a superior military power. So they built this ship in the hopes that their world would be born again far from the reach of their enemies. This is fascinating. I'd love a chance to study some of that. I can provide you with translations. Your language is simple Where's by comparison. <laughs> Excuse me. About why we're here? The ship has only enough raw material to transform one planet. Now that the transformation has been started, it must be finished here. Or the entire Gadmir civilization will be lost forever. The Incarans must leave where they were. Okay, die. what's the raw material made out of? Maybe we can restart. Alright, now see right there we got a problem. The Incarans cannot leave. Their lives depend on the very rare environmental conditions that are unique to this planet. That is unfortunate. That's it? Please explain the situation to the Incarans. Wait. Oh, that was a delay? She's like, but. And then, like, three seconds later, they get teleported away. The alien ship draws closer. Edrazar, you can still save the people of your village. Our resolve has not changed. We will not abandon the rest you of our You literally people. have a pregnant woman next to Did you, you and you're like, no, let's die. And weapons. No, you didn't. You brought us to this planet. We trusted you when you told us it was safe. I know. You gave us technology to build our cities, to provide heat. Have you not any way to stop the ship? They're trying. How much knack would it is in that reactor we gave him? Sir? What are you doing? Thinking, Daniel. Don't worry about it too much. Thinking of a way to blow up the ship? I I'm not really sure that's what General Hammond had in mind. They're gonna stand there and die. Yeah, well, no that's the choice. 
actually really But we're not going to sit around and watch these people stupid. get slaughtered. And you're willing to blow up that ship to do Give that? me another choice. Well, I don't have one at the moment. Apparently, time is a factor here. How do you make a knack with a bomb? Well, sir, the reactor was designed specifically to prevent exactly that kind Carter? of... Carter? Theoretically, if I created a feedback loop, the energy would build up instead of being released. It would be a big explosion, sir. Big enough? I think so. Carter, I'm making a choice to help these people. But if you don't make that These bomb, people aren't going to help themselves. They're just going to stand here and, like, they're just going to lay lay down and die. Like, so I have you to have play. an option and you're just like, nah, here's this pregnant woman next to me. We're just going to sit here and die. You're kind of disregarding your orders. Exactly. You're not planning on stay. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to go try to talk to Lotan. If you warn Lotan of our plan, it will prove ineffectual. I'm not going to give anything away. I just want to try to prevent it from being necessary. So do not remain until the return of Colonel O'Neill and Major Carter. Well, actually, Jack asked me to give him another choice. So technically, I'm following an order. Hello, Daniel Jackson. Hi. Are the Karens going to leave the planet? Actually, the Karens have nowhere else to go. That is tough luck. While you were gone, I took the opportunity to breathe some of the sulfur-based environment being created by the ship. How is it? Not good. Okay. Be honest with you, I'm here to see if you will consider alternate solutions to the problem faced by the Incarens. I am not programmed to solve the problem faced by the Incarens. Let me ask you something. What will happen to you when this is all over? I will be reintegrated into the ship's systems. You mean you'll die? Yes, I suppose that is one interpretation. Do you want to die? What I want is irrelevant. Wouldn't you like to uh, experience a little more of what it's like to be an Incarn before you're reintegrated? Maybe see some of the planet before it's completely transformed and maybe even meet the people. For what purpose? Because it might help you consider alternate solutions. I'm not programmed to consider alternate solutions. You said that the, the ship will continue the process without you, correct? Yes. As I have said, its function is fully automated. Well, there, then no harm done. We'll just... We'll have a look around. Sir, no disrespect intended, but I'm having doubts as to whether or not we're doing the right thing. What is I'll that, Carter? Are. The right thing. We brought these people here. They depend on us. What else are we gonna do? I don't know. Do you want to talk me out of this? Yes, sir. Stay in contact. Yes, sir. Daniel Jackson has gone to speak with Lotab. Did you try to stop? I do not disagree with his intentions. You do know we're going to try and blow up that ship. I am aware of that. This is Daniel Jackson. Daniel, come in. I reach you, Jack. Tell me. Tell me you're not on that ship. OK, I'm not on the ship. What are you doing, Daniel? I'm talking to Lotab. Are you going to tell him about the bomb? He said he would not reveal our plan. Sir, we only have 15 minutes. Daniel, do you know what time it is? I am trying to give you another choice. What? Uh, what? Hang on, we're on our way back to the village. For now, what? you have disobeyed your superior. No, not exactly. You are not fulfilling your function, Daniel Jackson. Well, see, that's not true. I'm just, I'm choosing the best way to fulfill my true function. See, sometimes hierarchical command structures don't allow you to consider all the possible options. I see. Let's, um, let's go to the village. Daniel? Lotan wanted to meet the Incarens. Ten minutes, sir. Hello, Dr. Jackson. Hello, Ilium. This is So that conversation Lotan. was five minutes? He looks Incaren, but I have not met him before. Lotan is a representative of the aliens who built the ship. He was created in your image in order to better communicate the ship's mission and the danger you were in. Yet he does not stop it. No. Lotan, this is Elia. This is his wife, Nika, and this is Hedrazar, the leader of the village. Nika. Are you now able to see the lives that will be extinguished if your ship continues its current path? Yes, Lotan is aware of that. She is without sight. 
that something that was happening to them on the planet when we first met. They were dying. And this was the only planet we could find where we knew that they could survive. I am aware of their physiological needs. Yes, of course. That one is going to give birth. Yes, to a uh, new and Karen life. There will be no and Karen life at all if your ship does not stop. I, I think mean, we're all aware of the situation. I mean, you could have chosen to evacuate, yes, you but you're like, nah, let's just stand and die. Well, actually, they're your people in a way, Lotan. You were created in their image. I was not created to prevent their demise, Daniel Jackson. But don't you wish you could? The ship calls me back. I must go. Take me with you. No. Daniel, no! Five minutes, sir. Lotan just took Daniel back onto the ship. What, sir? The quickest fucking ten minutes of my life. Well, what are we gonna do, sir? The ship is almost in position. The ship has detected an unusual device. It appears to be capable of emitting great amounts of energy. Is this device intended to try and stop the ship, as the Incaran named Ilium suggested? Look, Lotan, I don't agree with what they're doing, but I also don't want to see you wipe out those people. If they will not leave, there is no other option. Lotan, if you wanted to, can you stop the ship? As I have said... Yes, I, I know what you said. It is not about what you want. Just please, just answer the question. Can you stop the ship? It would be possible, yes. Then think about this. Think about the people down there. And all the life that you will be destroying. I am programmed to serve the life on this ship. You say that they were an advanced civilization. 10,000 years of history. Yes. They had laws. Justice. Yes. A respect for life. Yes. Then how can the world be recreated through an act of mass murder? Wouldn't that they be a betrayal peaceful. of everything they stood for? You said you were made to communicate. You're not here simply to serve life on this ship. You're here to protect the integrity of life on this ship. There's a big difference. Are you really fulfilling your true function by allowing this to happen? Ship has stopped on you. Really feel yeah, like these guys are just making the wrong choice here. They could have evacuated. Yes, Daniel, maybe they wouldn't survive, but it's better you chance than seconds. standing here and dying. Three zero, over. Um, about that device. It is still active. Yes, can you do anything about that? Well, this first to stop the ship. What, what is going on? Ship remains. That doesn't look like a very big explosion. Sounded Powerful like one. Explosive. But... We were desperate. The conflict remains unresolved. I must eventually resume the transformation process on this planet, or the Gadmir civilization will be lost. I know. But do you need to do it now? Many millions of planets were scanned <laughs> to match the right conditions for the transformation. Only one met the specifications. Just out of curiosity, were any others even close? Here. So we are gonna evacuate them. This planet would be appropriate for the Incarans. I regret that I did not consider this possibility, Daniel Jackson. Well, well, you would have gotten there. But does it have Stargate? This planet was rejected by the ship because three of the parameters were not correct. The core temperature was too warm, the size was too large, and there were intelligent life forms already present. Intelligent life forms? Based on the description, I believe they were in Karen. So, what shall we do now? Wait, what is it? It's okay. Don't, uh, don't be afraid. What's going on? Lotan would like to offer you a compromise. The ship has expended too many of the resources needed for the transformation process to begin again on another planet. I require that you give up this world. How is that a compromise? Well, listen. We found the original Incaran homeworld. How? It was one of several million planets scanned by the ship before it settled on this one, and it was rejected partly because of the presence of intelligent life forms. He's telling us this now. Well, he didn't know, and technically he's just a day and a half old, so give him a break. <laughs> We will gladly accept this offer to return to the home of our ancestors. Well, now you'll leave. How do we get them there? The Incaran homeworld has no Stargate. Well, actually, I have this friend with a big spaceship who's willing to take them. Is this possible? Yes. Once you are safely to your home planet, I will be reintegrated into the ship's systems, and the ship will return here to complete the transformation process. Does it have to happen? Uh, the part about you being reintegrated? 
No. What other option is there? But you are in Karen. You must stay with us. That is not contrary to my programming. Lotan says thank you. He'd like that very much. Spread the word among the villagers. We are going home. Yes. I mean, I guess it worked out in the end, but like, you guys were just willing to stay there and die. What kind of civilization just gives up like that? Alrighty-o, well that was uh, Stargate Issue 1, Season 4, Episode 9. Um, I still think they were kind of stupid to just sit there and... Like, they could have... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I expressed my opinions through the the reaction. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh -oh.